Resilience requires us to see with new eyes, to ask different kinds of questions, to embrace uncertainty, and to find opportunity in change. Not that long ago, maybe 10, 15 years ago, climate change was not a household word. You know, you know, today, you know, when you turn on the news, you hear it. So uh, weather discussions are becoming climate change discussions. We've had uh, last year over 100 degree temperatures several days in a row, not used to 100 degrees, maybe one or two days, but then back, but then it was like four or five days. So the temperature has been a lot hotter. The heat is, is uh, not good, you know, I mean, it will it'll take a toll on the cow. Weather extremes are becoming more and more pronounced, more and more prominent. Uh, 2002 was the driest year in 100 years in central North Carolina. 2003 was the wettest year in 100 years. 2007 was the driest year ever recorded here. 2010 was the hottest summer ever recorded. 2010, 11, and 12, July was the hottest July ever recorded here. 2% of us are farmers, 100% of us are eaters. Uh, we're all impacted by climate change. Farmers and ranchers have something unique to teach us about climate resilience. 12 April is so much easier than trying to live with what we lived with in the past when we sold our milk for less than it cost us to, to make it. I'm not a grass grazer. I'm a forager of crops. That's what makes them so happy is that they're having this beautiful, lush, quality forage 12 months out of the year. And you can wait till the situation is already there. Uh, you got a drought, okay, so what can you plant or what can you not plant? When I operated this farm as a centralized, commoditized, industrialized farm, I never thought of it as a strip mine, but there was an element of that kind of operation to it. But now that we operate it as a um, living, regenerative organism, the resilience of it comes from that. We have always managed for variable weather because we get all kinds of weather here in the southeast. And so we try to put our eggs in a lot of different baskets. We spread our, our risks to weather and everything else out by doing a wide variety of crops over a wide period of the season. We are growing more crops under cover in greenhouses because that gives us a buffer against the weather. But in general, we have always managed for variable weather and that serves us well as we get ever more variable weather. We know enough to take the first steps along the path to our resilient future. Let's begin. 48 feet to the low temp pasteurizer, to the bottle, to the consumer, and it's all right here. And I have other people that are doing this now. They, they're grazing. I have farmers that are doing bottling and a whole work, just everything that I am. I don't have any doubt that people will continue to adapt um, and grow and learn um, in the face of uh, whatever radical changes come along. Um, but I don't think it's going to be easy. I know the decision will lie not in the hands of those farmers. The decision will lie in the hands of the consumer that makes demands on how they want their food grown. As I have said to many people who have limited knowledge of what it is that we do here, no matter what the weather's doing, it's usually benefiting something and, and is detrimental to something else. But the, the wide variety of things that we grow over the wide range of the season, um, it's really, it's our crop insurance and it's what what's makes us successful. The future here is very exciting to me. You know, when I first started making the changes from commoditized, industrialized, centralized agriculture to this organism that we call white oak pastures, I, I thought it was a, a destination. I now see it as a journey. This is the Climate Listening Project.